omega threes for migraine. Should we bother? Let's go over the data. So you can get omega threes in a couple of different forms, right? You can eat it in things like fish or olive oil, or you can take it in a supplement form. Let's dive into the data for both. Now, by far the strongest data comes from what we've learned about increasing your intake of food forms of omegas. So there was a study published in the British Medical Journal in May of 2021. Here's what they did. They had one group of people increase their consumption of omega-3s in things like olive oil, fish. Here's what they actually did. It's super cool. They took away their regular oils, which usually are inflammatory high omega-6 oils, right? They took those away and they replaced it with a combination of olive oil and macadamia nut oil. Cool, right? So anyway, they had people cook with that. The macadamia nut oil makes it so you can actually cook with your olive oil because you know you usually can't or it starts smoking up your whole kitchen, right? So that's not a good thing. Uh, so they added the macadamia nut oil so people could use it either pulled in salad dressings or they could cook with it or whatever. They just had people use it for everything. So they increased their consumption of omega-3s that way. The second thing they had people do is eat four to eight ounces of salmon every single day. Okay, now I know some of you are rolling your eyes going, oh my gosh, I can't do that. It's not as hard as you think. Four ounces of salmon is super small, you know, maybe like just this much or so. And once you get into the habit of it, you can find an easy way to put it on a salad, have it as an appetizer. Um, it's easier than you think. What they found is that after doing this from, for three months, people's average monthly headache days dropped from 16 on average in a month down to nine headache days a month. That's all they did. They used a different kind of cooking oil and they ate salmon every day. Isn't that incredible? So the main thing that they're doing there is increasing the omega-3s. I do want to take a second to show you this study. There it is. Check out that beautiful study. Super cool information. Love it that we have really, really good concrete information about the effect of dietary interventions for migraine. So if you are a diehard, I am not going to eat salmon every day kind of person, does it help you to go with plan B, which is to take omega-3s in pill form, fish oil, DHA and EPA? Well, the data isn't as good. I got to be honest with you. So there was a systematic review that was published in 2018. They looked at 13 different trials of omega-3s for headaches. And what they saw is a reduction in the duration of the headaches, but not frequency or severity. Here's the study, Effects of Omega-3 Fatty Acids on the Frequency, Severity, and Duration of Migraine Attacks, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. And I would draw your attention to the last line here, which says, in conclusion, omega-3 intake leads to a significant reduction of approximately 3.44 hours in the duration of a migraine. Okay, it's not earth shattering, I know, Three and a half hours less of migraine is a good thing, but it's not as good as having seven fewer headache days a month, which is what you get by actually eating omega-3s. So big picture bottom line, definitely get more omega-3s in your diet, definitely reduce your omega-6s. I'm not saying that we don't need any omega-6s, we do, but for most of us, we don't have to try to get them. They just kind of come at us, especially if you're eating nuts. The thing that we have to actually try to get is more omega-3s. Now, if salmon isn't your thing, there are a lot of other safe seafood choices. Shrimp, for example, tons of omega-3s in there. Cod, also not bad. Tilapia, some people like it, no judgment. Um, <laughs> I would encourage you to stay away from the higher mercury sources of fish because even if your headaches get better then you're causing yourself another problem in the form of higher levels of mercury in your body. That is things like swordfish, mahi, tuna. I know, sad, right? Um, but we got to limit our consumption of those in favor of things that are a little lower on the food chain and less likely to contain mercury. So hope that helps everybody. I'm going to put a link to a 
Thai omega-3 salad dressing for you right after this video. Another easy way for you to bump up those omega-3s without even thinking about it.